Good afternoon. Welcome to the post-lunch company presentations. I will be making forward-looking statements today regarding Sangamo. So Sangamo at a high level is really a, a zinc finger protein company, and we were founded uh, based upon that technology, and our core competency is really uh, looking to engineer zinc finger proteins to drive uh, genetic cures and genetic outcomes. And so what we've done is, is actually pulled together a, a full pipeline and, and portfolio of programs based upon the capacity to engineer zinc fingers to have a very specific uh, binding affinity down to the individual gene and down to the individual base pair. So we can drive targeted genome editing as well as gene regulation. We have broad delivery capabilities, both in vivo as well as ex vivo. Manufacture know-how and intellectual property as well as a, a broad kind of platform IP perspective. So the engineering of zinc finger proteins are agnostic to the DNA sequence and actually agnostic to the organism. So we've done a nice job of commercializing these in, in a variety of different industries with our commercial partners and we've uh, taken on kind of the sole focus of moving forward the therapeutic programs. So we have significant partnerships, a very strong balance sheet at this point as well as a dominant intellectual property position in the zinc finger and genome editing space. So as I mentioned, the core competency in terms of Sangmo is the ability to engineer zinc finger proteins. This is actually very similar to small molecule optimization and, and lead design, where we can bind down to the individual base pair within a gene, within an exon or, in, or intron, and actually uh, you know, optimize the efficiency as well as the off-target cutting to really look for high efficiency and safety for these therapeutic programs. But the, the main uh, thing that we look for is really attaching the functional domain. And so we can regulate gene expression by attaching a transcription factor to either repress the gene or activate the gene of interest. And I'll highlight some specific product examples that we look at. As well as we can create a pair of zinc fingers, attach a, uh, a heterodimer of an endonuclease domain to create a, dar a targeted double-stranded break in a gene. And so the goal here is to either knock out a gene of interest or to add in a gene or correct a specific mutation. To date, we've really uh, focused on, on just a few partnerships. So in the mid-2000s, late-2000s, we completed non-therapeutic uh, collaborations. These were with Dow AgroSciences in the field of plant agriculture, as well as Sigma Aldrich for pretty much all other non-therapeutic aspects. And to date, these have brought in over $100 million to the company in terms of non-dilutive capital that we've been able to push forward in terms of our uh, therapeutic programs. In 2012, we signed our first major deal focused on in vivo delivery of zinc finger proteins with Shire PLC. And this is focused on hemophilia A and B, factors 7 through 10. We tend to do uh, our, our deals to date focused on individual gene sequences. Additionally, Huntington's disease focused on the, the mutant Huntington protein was a particular target that Shire selected. And it was a seven target deal, so they still have two remaining targets that are um, up for nomination. Additionally, earlier this year, we signed our first ex vivo deal with Biogen IDEC. This is focused on ex vivo gene modification of hematopoietic stem cells in an autologous processing to allow gene, uh, to allow gene edited uh, autologous transplants. And then Sangmo has really uh, leveraged these existing collaborations to push forward individual platforms, which I'll talk about in a little bit, that can focus on a variety of different indications, but leverage a lot of the delivery infrastructure uh, design of the zinc finger proteins and overall therapeutic paradigms uh, into some of our own programs. So this is a, a busy slide, but um, it is the way we think about product development. The major bifurcation for us is really, are we delivering zinc fingers in vivo as the actual therapeutic via, say, a adeno-associated virus vector? Or are we pulling out cells from a patient, modifying those cells, and putting those genetically edited cells back in, in terms of a cellular therapy? So the top half really is the, the in vivo approach, and the bottom half is the ex vivo. For the purpose of this conference focused on stem cells, I thought I would highlight two of our, our stem cell applications um, in a little bit more detail, but also briefly touch on two in vivo programs. So first, uh, focused on our HIV program. 
Um, we've developed a zinc finger protein that can create a targeted knockout of CCR5. CCR5 is a validated target in the HIV space. Maraviroc is a CCR5 inhibitor. And the only patient that's been cured of HIV was um, received a uh, allogeneic um, transplant from a homozygous CCR5 knockout donor. In terms of current standard of care in HIV, they're actually quite good to, to repress the HIV RNA. However, when you take away the antiretroviral therapy, the virus comes back, and, and this is because the HIV DNA reservoir still exists in the gut and in other uh, secluded places. And so what our goal is is to really um, develop a functional cure for HIV in the terms of a ex vivo genetically modified cell therapy. So on the left-hand side here, we have um, our same zinc finger. It's SB728. This knocks out CCR5 and T cells. And on the right-hand side, we have the stem cell approach, which is a autologous gene-edited transplant still knocking out CCR5. The right-hand side is directly um, analogous to the, uh, the Berlin patient, whereas the left-hand side is in T cells, but peripherally analogous, looking to really do something similar to the ex vivo T cell therapy in oncology, this adoptive T cell therapy, and looking to create a protected compartment of the immune system that can go and mount an anti HIV effect um, in the absence of antiretroviral therapies. So, we've completed a number of clinical trials here. I just wanted to highlight this. We published in the New England Journal of Medicine earlier this year. This is the first genome edited therapy tested in man. Again, this is the knockout of CCR5. It was safe, well tolerated. And we demonstrated some preliminary efficacy in terms of viral control. And we're moving forward to really optimize uh, the dose of the cells, the preconditioning regimen, and, and really want to increase the number of biallelic CCR5 knockouts in these patients to create a functional cure for HIV. So in terms of next steps, 1401 uh, represents a trial that we put forward this year. This is where an IND has been uh, started. We have the optimum cytoxin preconditioning regimen. Uh, mRNA delivery, so we can actually redose, so it's completely non-viral targeted delivery. And we're looking to um, also open the stem cell program this year with a phase one start study starting in Q4. The other stem cell program I wanted to highlight is our hemoglobinoptes program. We partnered this with Biogen earlier this year. Again, I'll skip over this just because of time. Again, this is an ex vivo uh, knockout of a, a novel target now, BC11A, which is a repressor of fetal hemoglobin. And the goal here really is to um, restore these patients back to normal hematopoiesis via um, kind of a, a natural pathway that is uh, present in early stages of life. So uh, subjects or um, children younger than six months of age have normal levels of fetal hemoglobin and they have no phenotypic demonstration of disease. And so the goal here really is again on, on functional cure. And I should mention that both the HIV stem cell program as well as this hemoglobin optis programs were both partnered uh, with uh, CIRM and they helped us move these into the clinic and they've been a, a huge advocate for these programs. So in summary on the hemoglobin optis programs and really across the board on all of our ex vivo programs, these are um, delivery of mRNA to the cells that create a targeted double-stranded break in a gene, CCR5 for HIV, BC11A for hemoglobin optis. Um, the goal is functional cure of each of these indications. We're getting very high uh, efficiency in terms of targeted knockout as well as a good safety profile. And this beta thalassemia program is moving into phase one. Just a quick overview on the in vivo program. So um, we're looking at adeno-associated virus delivery to the liver. Um, I'll talk about that first, and then to the brain for the second program. In terms of the goal here, you've heard a lot about the AAV cDNA strategies. So our strategy is somewhat similar, but we're modifying the endogenous locus. So we're actually looking at the albumin gene. Albumin is produced at very high levels out of the liver. Uh, we're capitalizing on that very strong promoter, looking to create a double-stranded break downstream from that promoter, insert our targeted gene of interest, and this is directly applicable to a number of monogenic diseases. Um, hemophilia A and B are partnered with Shire, as I mentioned. However, this approach is directly uh, applicable to a variety of indications. Our initial path is really going to move forward towards lysosomal storage diseases. What's nice about this 
is we can leverage the same adeno-associated virus delivery vehicle, the same zinc finger nucleases towards albumin, the same homology arms, and really just switch out the donor DNA of interest. So we get a lot of leverageability, um, both in terms of the overall science, but as well as manufacturing in terms of AAV. And we're looking to move these programs forward into the clinic on our own next year. In terms of the Huntington's program, this is actually one of my favorite programs, primarily because there is really nothing that can, can modify the course of disease in Huntington's. Um, if you don't know, what Huntington's it has a, um, one allele is mutated and has a, um, basically these CAG repeats. If you have greater than 35 CAG repeats, you're going to get Huntington's disease. However, the other allele is, is wild type. And so our technical challenge was really focused on developing a zinc finger protein that could sit down on just the mutant uh, Huntington allele, but leave the wild type allele alone. And we've been able to do that. And we're leveraging a direct brain injection with adeno-associated virus to, uh, to the brain to provide the zinc finger protein to sit down on, the, on that mutant Huntington allele uh, repress that mutant protein, but leave the wild type protein alone. And the goal is to have a one-time treatment equaling um, a, a, a permanent treatment for these patients to really impact the course of disease. So from a, a corporate perspective, the zinc finger technology has really been shown to be a robust platform. I highlighted two different uh, really um, main uh, aspects here, in vivo as well as ex vivo delivery of zinc fingers from a therapeutic perspective. We have several INDs and two phase two readouts by the end of next year. And then looking forward, our goal is really to become an IND engine where we're pulling out maybe two to four INDs per year based upon these therapeutic platforms. We have major partnerships and sufficient cash at this point. Uh, we're projected to end the year with over 225 million in cash. So we have the financial capabilities to push forward our own programs. And our strategies really create significant value and mitigate risk via diversification and leverage for the company. So thank you very much. I'm happy to be here and happy to take questions afterwards.